Hello Anatomy colleagues, this is Dr. Alsip, and in this mini video we will be discussing the connective tissue, and I often like to abbreviate this to CT, uh, so the connective tissue associated with skeletal muscle. And connective tissue is actually quite intimately related to muscle at both a microscopic and a gross level, and we'll talk about kind of from that smaller scale to the larger scale. And it will actually eventually continue past the muscle belly to form tendons of various shapes and sizes. So let's get started at the smallest level with the endometrium. Sometimes you'll hear endomesium or endometrium. Either way, same thing. And uh, what this does is actually surround each muscle cell or each muscle fiber. So we're looking at one muscle cell here, and it is the connective tissue that's going to surround the cell. So microscopic for sure. This layer is very thin and mostly uh, made of reticular fibers. And importantly, and you can kind of see this in this image, it will have blood vessels associated and kind of traveling along the endometrium, which will be important for the supply of nutrients to these individual muscle cells. Continuous when the, with the endometrium, but thicker and on a more gross scale is the paramecium. Um, and a paramecium or a paramecium will surround fascicles, and fascicles are a new term for us. Um, so what this means, a, a fascicle is a group of muscle fibers. And you may have noticed this organization yourself if you've ever seen someone kind of pulling apart a piece of cooked meat. It pulls apart in chunks or in groups, and these groups are the fascicles. So these are collections of muscle fibers kind of combined into one. And the muscle cells within the fascicle are bound by the paramecium. So if we're looking here, this is a muscle fiber, so this would be the endometrium. And so this would be the paramecium if you get on this larger scale. All right, and then continuous with the paramecium is the epimecium, which will surround the entire muscle belly. Uh, so it's going to be it's going to bound all or bind all of the fascicles together. So the epimecium, you can kind of see it here, but it would continue along the entirety of the uh, muscle belly. Um. Hold on. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. <laughs> so make a note here. Not only are the muscle bellies that you can see um, made up of collections of muscle fibers, but that connective tissue is going to be throughout. So on that smallest scale with the endometrium, the paramecium surrounding fascicles, and the epimecium surrounding the entire muscle belly. So uh, that's, a, that's an important thing to consider is that these are continuous. And so if you think about tension occurring because of contraction of a muscle cell, that will kind of spread throughout because you have these uh, the connective tissue binding everything and kind of surrounding all of these areas. Connective tissue will continue beyond the muscle belly as tendons. And you can see that here, so continuous with the epimecium. Uh, once we get past kind of the muscle belly region, now we call this a tendon. And tendons are going to connect muscle belly to bone. And it will actually be continuous with the periosteum. If you recall, that periosteum is going to surround a bone. And it actually will extend and become uh, intermingled with the collagen of the osseous extracellular matrix. So this is very important in terms of the function and functioning of the musculoskeletal system and allowing movement. So you have tension in the muscle because of that close connection to the periosteum and kind of within to the extracellular matrix. Uh, if you have tension in the muscle, that will cause for the bone to move as well, kind of pulling of the bone. Now a few things about tendons. This connective tissue is mostly highly organized collagen fibers, and so that's why uh, tendons will have that very distinct whitish appearance. 
uh, tendons are poorly vascularized. So whereas you did have small uh, vessels associated with um, some of the, the more microscopic scale connective tissue, and you still will have some in, associated with the tendons, it's just not as much. So poorly vascularized, and anytime anything is poorly vascularized, it's slower to heal. And lastly, there will be no muscle cells associated with tendon. So it is past the muscle belly, and that's what characterizes a tendon. Tendons can have many different shapes and sizes. Some are very rope-like and clearly visible. We'll see that with, say, the biceps brachii, um, with your gastrocnemius and soleus muscles on your calf. Those are going to be very distinct, very visible tendons. But some tendons are so short and close to the bone, you can't see them well at all. But rest assured, they are there. You're always going to have a tendon associated with the skeletal muscle attaching to the bone, even if it's not uh, as visible. There can also be flat sheets of tendons, and we call these aponeurosis, or aponeuroses, if you're talking about the plural. And you can see one right here on the palm of the hand. You can see it is uh, much flatter. Um, but it still has that very characteristic whitish appearance that a tendon does. And these uh, will not only serve the normal function, uh, function of connecting muscle to bone, but it also can serve as additional protection to other muscles and neurovasculature in the surrounding area. So think there's got to be a lot of structures that are deep to this aponeurosis. So this is just another uh, added protection to the, the palmar region. Lastly, let's discuss fascia, which I love fascia. This is a um, this is going to be dense irregular connective tissue, and what it's going to do is it's going to group together uh, certain structures. It could be groups of muscles, it could be neurovasculature. In terms of MSK, a fascia or where we're going to kind of focus our attention in is fascia is going to surround groups of muscles that typically have a similar action, innervation, and vascular supply. So you can see this fascia surrounding this group of muscle here, fascia surrounding this group of muscle. And so these are going to kind of be these separate muscle groups that we'll talk about when we get into the different types of muscles. And like I said, what's really neat about these are that they often will have similar actions, similar innervation, and similar arterial supply. And that really helps in terms of understanding what's going on in those areas. So lots going on in terms of connective tissue associated with skeletal muscle. It is very vital to the function of the musculoskeletal system. All right, review and assessment time, everyone's favorite. So the question uh, for today is going to be, muscle tendons are closely associated with which structure of the skeletal system? Is it A, articular cartilage, B, endosteum, C, epiphyseal plate, D, medullary cavity, or E, periosteum. So you have to kind of remember these structures from when we were talking about the skeletal system. You kind of apply it uh, with now the, the connective tissue associated with the muscle. So pause the video if needed, and when ready, I hope that you have landed on that E is the correct answer, the periosteum. So remember that periosteum is surrounding the external surface of a bone, a muscle tendon will become continuous with the periosteum in specific places. It'll even kind of go in towards um, the actual bone to intermingle with that. So that would be correct. Medullary cavity is way too internal, as is the endosteum. The epiphyseal plate, uh, you're not going to have a muscle tendon attaching right there. That's an important area in terms of growth. It's a, it's a joint, so it, this would not be right. And you will while articular cartilage is going to be connective tissue, that's going to be on the ends of bones, and uh, you typically do not have tendons associated with that area that's serving a different function. So periosteum is right on. That's a very important connection uh, because of that really intimate and close relationship between the tendons and periosteum. You can really allow for the bone to be pulled when muscles contract. All right. Thank you for your time and attention here. And have a great rest of your day.